Hey there, Awana families. This is Pastor Carlos, and welcome once again to this week's Council Time. As we work our way through Ephesians, we arrive at the first of two prayers that Paul prays for the Ephesians. As we study through Paul's prayer, we are reminded of the absolute importance of prayer for our spiritual lives. Prayer is like food for the body or fuel for the car. If you stop eating, you will die. If you run out of gas, your car will not move. Likewise, prayer is a very important part of our spiritual lives. And we see this as we come to Paul's first prayer for the Ephesians. Let us begin by reading Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 19a. Paul says, For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you and your love for all of the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. My message is entitled, Paul's Prayer for Enlightenment. Uh, we will look at the motivation for Paul's prayer, the attitude of Paul's prayer, the content of Paul's prayer, and the results desired from Paul's prayer. Motivation, attitude, content, results. Well, let us consider the motivation for Paul's prayer. In verse 15, Paul says, For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you and your love for all of the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. As Paul reflects on the faith and love of his Ephesian readers, he is motivated to pray for his beloved brethren. Likewise, we, you and I, should feel motivated to pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Awana families, does the faith and love that you observe in your brethren motivate you to pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's now turn to the attitude of Paul's prayer. What is Paul's attitude as he prays for his brethren? Well, he tells us, I too, having heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, which is good, exists among you and your love for all of the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you. Do you see that? Paul does not cease to give thanks. His heart is filled to overflowing with thankfulness for his brethren. And what about you? Are you thankful for your brothers and sisters in Christ? Can I encourage you as you seek the Lord to ask the Lord to give you his heart for the brethren? As you delight in the goodness of the Lord, you will grow in your thankfulness to the Lord for those who belong to Christ. And now we come to the content of Paul's prayer. The content. Listen to what Paul prays. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. The content of Paul's prayer is fourfold. First, Paul prays for his readers to have a spirit of wisdom. Since Jesus Christ is the source of wisdom, Paul desires his readers to have the spirit of Christ. Wisdom can also be understood as the ability to apply truth to living. It is the ability to know how Christ and the wisdom that flows from him influences one's life, the things he does. Second, Paul prays for his readers to have a spirit of revelation. The idea here is that Christ would be revealed to the readers. Paul wants his readers to behold the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Third, Paul prays for his readers to have um, the knowledge of Christ. The word knowledge is to be understood relationally. It is not just head knowledge, but relational knowledge that Paul prays for his readers to experience. Paul wants his readers to enjoy an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus. Fourth, Paul prays for his readers to have spiritual vision. He prays that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. We know that the heart does not have literal eyeballs. So what does Paul mean when he says that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened? He wants his readers to have spiritual eyes so that by faith they might behold the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. We need, through the eyes of faith, to see, to behold the Lord Jesus. The content of Paul's prayer includes wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and vision. The bottom line is that Paul wants his readers to behold Christ through the eyes of faith. Uh, let's now turn our attention to the results desired from Paul's prayer, the results desired. Uh, Paul gives voice to the results he desires when he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. Paul wants his readers to know three things. First, Paul wants his readers to know the hope of his calling. He wants them to know, understand, and appreciate the great hope they have because of the Lord calling them into relationship with himself. Second, Paul wants his readers to know what they have inherited. An inheritance is something a person receives because of the death of another. Through the death of Christ, we have received an inheritance, and our inheritance is multifaceted. We have received a lot. Earlier, Paul refers to us being chosen, adopted, showered with grace, redeemed, forgiven, and sealed by the Holy Spirit, amongst other things. This is but the tip of the iceberg. We have received so much. We have the hope of heaven. We will one day be with the Lord and uh, we will be given sinless bodies. We will someday come to a place, heaven, where all things will be new. We have inherited so much through the death of Christ. Third, Paul wants his readers to know God's power to them. Paul describes God's power as surpassing and great. The very power that raised Christ from the dead is the power that has raised us up from the dead and it empowers us to live for the Lord. What a magnificent prayer is Paul's prayer for enlightenment. We have considered Paul's motivation for praying, his attitude of thankfulness when praying, the content of his prayer, and the results he desires from his prayer. He prays for his readers to behold the Lord Jesus through the eyes of faith, so that they would have a greater understanding and awareness of the gospel blessings that are theirs through the Lord Jesus Christ. Awana families, I pray this prayer for you as well. I pray that the Lord would grant to you, that he would grant to all of you, uh, that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. I pray that you would behold the Lord and, as a result, have a greater appreciation for all of the blessings that are yours through Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for listening. I look forward to our next council time together. And until then, may the Lord greatly bless each and every single one of you.